Okay, so for the majority of this course in this module, we are going to be looking at simple graphs. And the reason for that is simple graphs allow us to have some boundaries in place, which makes the mathematics to prove certain things and just um, by certain things, I mean certain properties of graphs a lot easier to cope with. Obviously, a lot of the stuff that we do for simple graphs can be extended to more complicated graphs like multi graphs and so on. But the whole idea being is this is an introductory course, let's keep it as basic as possible for us to, you know, go through the work and the concepts. And in order to do that, let's look at some of the properties of simple graphs. So for simple graphs, because there is a boundary in that they can't have multiple edges, it means they can have at most one edge between every, you know, vertice of the graph kind of a situation. So remember, a simple graph can't have loops and it can't have um, multiple edges. So that gives us some kind of boundary, which means we can have a range for the vertex degrees of a simple graph. So let's actually just have a look at that. So we have a graph. Let's just have like three vertices, B1, B2, B3. What is the minimum number of degrees a vertice can have? And that's really simple. It's really basic. It can be an isolated vertex, right? So it has a possibility of a degree of the vertice being equal to zero. So the lowest range of vertice degree that any vertice in the graph can have is zero. Then you can have the situation of, okay, what can the maximum vertex, vertex degree be in a graph? And now we've kind of already started covering this. We started covering this when we looked at and investigated, you know, complete graphs because in complete graphs, we have a situation of every vertice is connected to every other vertice, and that's the maximum situation in a simple graph. Because when you're looking at that and you're saying, okay, I can connect V1 to V2, and I can connect V1 to V3. I can't connect V1 to itself because this is a simple graph, and I can't make extra connections between V1 and V2, or V1 and V3 because it's a simple graph. So the maximum number of edges that I can have connected to V1 is the number of vertices left in the graph after we remove that V1. So we have the situation that V1 can be connected to every other vertice. And that can be its maximum you know, possible degree. Then we have to think about it in terms of, you know, more general sense. So if we have a situation of V1 can be connected to every other vertice, say we have n vertices instead of three vertices, then it's going to be a situation of, well, how many vertices can it be connected to? It can be connected to n minus one vertices. Why? Because you have to you have your graph as order n, it has n vertices, you have to remove one because that's the one that you're looking at, and it can be connected to every other one of them. So the maximum degree possible in a simple graph is n minus 1. Okay, so that's where that n minus 1 comes into. So you could have the degree of the vertice can be equal to n minus 1, and then that gives us our range of our vertex degree for a simple graph. So we know that the vertex degrees for all the vertices in the graph will between, be between 0 and n minus 1. And that gives us already a broad outline of like what exactly is happening inside the graph, like the, the boundaries. Okay, so the range of the size of the graph, this is a slightly more fun one, because you have to think of Firstly, the size of the graph is the number of edges. And obviously, you can have your isolated vertex, and that means that there are no edges in the graph. So that's like the base case. But then let's go back to this V1, V2, V3 situation. So if we want to put in as many edges as possible into our graph, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making sure that every degree of the vertices is equal to n minus 1. In other words, it's going to be an n minus 1 regular graph. Okay. And if it's an n minus 1 regular graph, we can determine how many edges it has by looking at it in regards to 
let's go back to this v1 v2 v3 example we want as many edges as possible that means that v1 must be connected to v2 and v3 it means that v2 must be connected to v1 and v3 and it means v3 must be connected to v2 and v1 and you would have seen this overlap that's occurring there so we're going to have to account for that overlap so the first thing is we're like okay the degree of v1 and my pen's not working let's give it some time so the degree of v1 is equal to 2 the degree of v2 is equal to 2 and the degree of v3 is equal to 2. But how many edges are there? There is 1, 2, 3 edges, right? And when we're looking at the degree of v1 and the degree of v2 and the degree of v3, it's counting. So when we looked at the degree of v2, it was, you know, v1 to v2 and v2 to v3. And when you looked at the degree of v1, it was that v1 to v2, and then that v1 to v3. So what was happening there is that every edge gets counted twice if we look at the number of degrees. So we can actually get the size or the maximum possible size of the graph through that those degrees. So we can be like, oh, well, there are n vertices they are connected to n minus 1 other vertices but because of that overlap situation we have to divide it by 2 because every every edge that is overlapping is being counted twice so that's where we get the 2 situation from and that's where we can work out our size of a graph the range of the size of the graph there are other ways that we can calculate and determine it so that's just one explanation there is another explanation where you can go into determining two items from n items in mathematics, you know, for that. But I think this one is a little bit easier for you to grasp and understand in that you want to count the number of edges. You can count the number of edges by looking at the number of vertices that exist. And if we are looking at, you know, a graph that has the maximum amount of edges, every vertice will be connected to every other vertice. So every vertice will be connected to all the other vertices, the n minus 1 situation. But if you do it like that and you just say n, n times n minus 1, you are counting, you know, that edge that is represented for both those vertices twice. So you're going to have to divide through by 2 to get, you know, down to the actual number of edges. Okay, so range of size of a simple graph. Okay, so if you're working with a simple graph, you're going to, and you look at your edges that you can have occurring. So you have vertice 1 and you have vertice 2. You would either have one edge occurring between them, or no edge. So that narrows down your, your choices here. So you either have an edge or you don't have an edge with any of the vertices in your graph, with v1, v2, or any of the vertices in your graph. And this is going to allow us to have a range for the size of a simple graph. So you, you can have a case of your size of your graph could be zero. So in other words, everything is an isolated vertex. That's your example where you have something like this. Remember, it doesn't have to be a three vertex graph. It can be a four vertex graph. It can be a one vertex graph. The idea behind that is the smallest possible graph that you can have, well, the smallest in size of the possible graph is going to be zero. So now you have a simple graph, and now you want to bump up the size. So what is the maximum number of edges that you can actually put into a simple graph? So this comes now into thinking about your vertices and the edges. So remember when you spoke about, and we did this theorem when we said, okay, the sum of the degrees of your vertices is equal to two times the size. One 
to n. So now let's pretend for a second that every single one of our vertex degrees is connected, every single one of our vertices is connected to every single one of the other vertices by an edge. In other words, they're adjacent to each other. So we, we're looking at the idea of a complete graph. So V1, V2, V3. Now, if we had to look at that, we'd have the degree of V1 plus the degree of V2 plus all the way through to the degree of Vn. If we're looking at that V1, V2, V3 example, it would stop the degree of V3. But now we can have a situation where we say, okay, the degree of this one is 2, the degree of that one is 2, the degree of that one is 2. In general terms, it would be n minus 1, right? Because that's how we defined what a complete graph looked like, was that it is n minus 1 regular, which means all the degrees, all the vertices have degree n minus 1. So let's actually put that n minus 1 into the summation. So we have n minus 1 plus n minus 1 plus all the way through to n minus 1. And we have 2 times the size there. Two times the size there of the graph G of the graph G. So how many of these n minus ones do we have? So again, let's just go back to our three by three example. Well, we have one. Let's actually use the color one, two, three of them. It's directly connected to how many vertices that we have. So what we actually have here is n n minus ones. So n times n minus 1, and that's going to give us our summation there. And again, it's still going to be equal to 2 times the size of g, which means our size of g is equal to n, n minus 1 divided by 2. So that's the maximum size that our graph can have. So we have the minimum. And we have the maximum. So where's the minimum again? It's zero. And we have the maximum size it could possibly be. In other words, if it was a complete graph, we would get that. So our range of our sizes is going to be from zero to n, n minus one divided by two. 